So uh, what we're going to do is just go over how to um, make some calculations um, for the preparation of molar solutions. So this is a laboratory-based skill. Um, we're not really going to go into the um, all the math of the uh, Avogadro's number and calculation uh, with using uh, those sorts of things. Uh, but I'll talk about it a little. We'll get some of the terminology put into it. Um, but really, this is more of a practical application of why you would need to know about molarity and how, if you're asked to calculate a molar solution, do you actually do it uh, and then prepare that solution? All right, so we'll take, take this as the problem right now. So the problem is you're asked to make 100 milliliters of a 0 0.3 molar sodium chloride solution. So, okay, okay so I, you need um, sodium chloride, you know that. Uh, this is the concentration that it's supposed to be, 0 0.3 molar. And we're going to talk about what is what is that. Uh, and then this is the volume. All right, that's how many milliliters you need. Right, and those are the three pieces of essential information that you would actually need. If someone just said, make up a sodium chloride solution, uh, you, I mean, technically you could do it, but, but it would be pointless because um, you would have no idea what concentration or how much. So you really need to know the, those two things or else it's, uh, it's kind of a waste of time and resources to actually just make something up without that. So um, the preparation part and the background, sort of the terminology. So we'll go, go over these. What you'll really need to know is sort of an equation um, to form this. Right? And that equation is, uh, from the practical standpoint, what, what are you going to do? All right, you're going to have uh, a, let's say, an Erlenmeyer flask like this. Okay, and into this flask, you're going to put water. And let's say in this case, it's going to be 100 milliliters of water. And then you're going to need to add to that water sodium chloride. But now the question is how much? Because we need to make the concentration 0 0.3 molar, but how much? salt is that and that's what we have to find out is to find out how much salt or whatever the solute is so the solute is what we're dissolving in water typically or the solvent uh, to prepare that solution so what we need to know are grams the grams of the solute equals and we need to know those three things we need to know molarity we need to know the molecular weight of the substance, and I'll break these down in a second. Uh, and then we need to know the total volume. All right. So now we'll look at this. Molarity is in units. The units for molarity are moles per liter. So we'll stop there a second, and we'll say, you know, so what's a mole? All right. And so again, this is really. Um, Nothing you, you have to work with for this particular problem. Uh, it's something in a chemistry class that will become important for calculating other sorts of things, um, but not, not right here. But I'll talk about it for a second. So what is a mole? A mole is a unit of measure, really. Uh, and it's a quantity of a sum of things. Just like you say a dozen means 12, right? So if you said you have a dozen donuts, that would mean you know how many there are. There are, are specifically 12. Well, a mole is a specific quantity of something, and it's such a large number that it's typically only used for atoms. So it's used to count atoms to represent a group of atoms. And so that a mole is There we go. This many atoms, all right? Or we usually write it because we never want to write that out again, right? Um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power, okay? And so that is what we call Avogadro's number, this gigantic number, right? And it means this many atoms equals one mole. Just like for example, uh, like 12 donuts 
equal a dozen. All right, so it, same, the same concept, right? The same sort of idea. We have a, a, a term, a dozen, represents 12 of something. A mole represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something that are very, very small things, right? That are atoms. So we're not using this number in the calculation. So don't you don't even really have to worry about it here. The only reason I'm really bringing it up, you're like, why did you, why did you talk about that? So it's because we're using this term. And if you don't really know what the term is or what it's referring to, you're, you're really losing some grasp of the why we would do this. Okay, why would you make a molar solution in the first place? Why not just make a percentage solution or something, which would be a lot easier to do. Um, and it has to do kind of with the next term, all right, that we're going to talk about here, molecular weight. So we have moles per liter, and then we have molecular weight. So this MW is molecular weight. Now, in terms of atomic weight, atomic mass, molecular weight, molecular mass, mass is really the probably the better term. Um, in that it doesn't uh, imply that gravity uh, has any factor on it, right? Whereas weight does. But we're working with this on Earth. Typically, probably I'm not, and none of you are ever going to be um, in the absence of gravity doing this sort of work. So in that particular case, we would have to say and use mass because the mass would be the same and the weight would be different to be a different weight. But since we're on Earth and we're probably not going to be anywhere else but Earth, um, weight uh, we could use. I don't know why I misspelled that. Wait, okay. What is a molecular weight? Well, if we have a molecule, which is a group of atoms, okay, like let's say in our problem, sodium chloride. A very simple molecule. It's made up of two atoms joined together with an ionic bond, sodium and chlorine. If you look into the periodic table, each one has its own atomic mass, right, or atomic weight, right? So for sodium, it is, uh, you would look this up, it'd be 22, it's really like 0.98. Uh, and so we can kind of, we can round this for our purposes, okay? Again, in a chemistry class, this is, I'm not t teaching this for specifically a chemistry class, this is more for a, a biology lab where you're preparing a solution to use in some sort of experiment. Um, we could just round this here. 23. Okay. Now, what is it? It's in units. Okay. That's 23 grams per mole. All right. So that's the unit. Or 22.9 grams per mole. So, so back to our uh, um, sort of reference here to the uh, Avogadro's number and the talking about a mole, right? 23 grams per mole means if you would weigh out 23 grams of sodium, you would have one mole of sodium. So, so you know, to count those individual atoms would be very difficult, but we could weigh them. Okay, so that's why we talked about the molecular weight. Uh, and if we weigh them, and once we get to the point, you're pouring them on, into a little weigh boat on a balance and you get 23 grams, that's a mole. That's how much you would have as an actual mole. But now let's say it's a molecule. There's two different types of um, elements here. There's also chlorine. Chlorine's uh, atomic mass or atomic weight here uh, is going to be 35.45. And that's the same thing, grams per mole. So if we put them together, so for sodium chloride, kind of add them up, we get, we'll kind of round it, we'll have 58.4, I'll say. So molecular weight is in grams, I'll put that the actual units in in a bit, grams per mole. And then we have volume. Volume it would seem pretty straightforward, but this is one place I know where students uh, trip up. Uh, it's because volume must be in liters. It has to be in liters. All right, so it's gonna just be liters over one, like that. And what this means is that if you were to solve this out, you would see as you multiply across that the moles would cancel out 
and the liters would cancel out and your answer would be in the units of grams. So it would be, the question would be, how many grams of sodium chloride do we need to make this 0.3 molar solution? So now we can actually plug it in here and do it. So we can say, okay, so here we go. Here's the actual solving of the problem. How many grams do we need? Okay, I don't know, but let's see what we know. We know we have 0.3 molar, that's the requirement. So for molar, molar concentration, we're gonna put 0.3 moles per liter times molecular weight. Well, what's the molecular weight of sodium chloride? It didn't tell us, but it's something we could either look up or we could figure out on our own, just with a periodic table. Sodium chlorine, add up the atomic masses, you get the uh, molecular mass or molecular weight. So we put that in there, 58.4 grams per mole. And then we put in the volume, and the volume has to be in liters. So we say we need 100 milliliters, so that's, that again, there's a, that's a stumbling place for a lot of students. So do you put in 100? You can't, because it says milliliters, not liters. So now we have to know this as well. So something else, what's a liter? So a liter is going to be 1,000 milliliters. So say, oh, I don't need 1,000, I only need 100, I only need one-tenth of that. So all you're doing is moving it one, one decimal place. So it's really zero. 0.1 liters. That's 100 milliliters, right? The other way of doing it is you figure if you have different numbers, if, if you have 27 milliliters or 380 milliliters or something like that, uh, again, all you have to do is move a decimal place, but you could just say, you know, milliliters divided by a thousand will give you liters. So when you need to calculate this to know how many liters you actually need, just if it's in milliliter, if you're told, if you're given the um, requirement in liters, you just plug in liters. That's it. But if you're given the requirement in milliliters, then you're going to need to convert it, uh, or else the calculation will be wrong. And that's a very, very common thing. I see it uh, happen all the time. People don't do the conversion. They stick milliliters in there, and they get a ridiculous number. Um, that do that doesn't work. The, the solution is it's a very, very concentrated, over concentrated solution. So then it's pretty simple. All you do is multiply. So how many grams of salt do we need? Multiply 0.3 times 58.4 times 0 0.1. And I already did it, so I didn't have to fiddle with the calculator. Um, and that is 1.75 grams. That means if I took 1.75 grams of salt, weighed it out, mixed it with the 100 mils of water, I'd have the one or not, I'd have one, I'd have a 0 0.3 molar solution, uh, and I'd have 100 mils of that solution, and I'd be set to go, right? So that, so what you need to know to work out a molar problem is this equation, okay? You need to know that you're always going to be solving for grams. You need to know that there are certain pieces of information that you cannot solve the problem without, right? So some of them you must be given. Uh, typically, you have to be given the molar concentration. If someone doesn't ask for a specific one, you can't really solve the problem. And you should be given a specific volume. Uh, if you're not given a specific volume, then once again, you know, you could put in anything. Maybe just do one liter because it's just easy to just put in one, you know, for that. Um, but typically, you'd be given that. The molecular weight you're usually not given, but you're told what the chemical is. And so you then just either look it up or figure it out. And let's, I'll just do one last thing for molecular weight, just to kind of show you. Let's say instead of sodium chloride, you know, the, it was uh, glucose. So you're like, oh, I, I don't know, I don't even have the formula there. Well, you could look in, look it up. C6H12O6. So you look up the atomic mass of each of these, that's one, it's the atomic mass, and that would be times 12. So that'd be a total of 12 for all the hydrogens. Carbon is 12, and there's six of them. So 72. And then oxygen is 15.9999. So we could just basically say it's 16, all right, for our purposes. Um, and there's six of those. And that's 96, okay? So if we add those up, um, we get the um, molecular weight for glucose 
um, is going to be about 180 grams per mole. In that particular case, if we changed it, we would just then substitute this number. We would take that number out. Obviously, we're going to get a new number here. And we plug in the 180 uh, grams per mole here. And then we just resolve it again, okay, and just solve the equation. So it's very, very straightforward. Know this, get those pieces of information. Uh, remember that it has to be in liters. Um, and that your answer is going to be in grams, and that the final solution is going to be, you know, you're going to add that particular solute to a solvent, which is most often going to be water uh, to make the molar solution. And that's what you really need to know.